Later, save crackers, get your combinations ready because it is time for that comic vault! A vault full of comics that include The Phantom! The Phantom, issues one and two from the 1989 series by Mark Verheiden. And it was sent to us by one of our faithful viewers. So thank you to you. We appreciate it. Indeed we do. Let's get on with the review. Uh, there are 13 issues in this series. There was a predecessor series, which uh, the review should already be up for that, of issues 1 through 4 by Peter David. This one is connected to that Peter David series, but it is quite different, even though it's following the exploits uh, or the adventures of the same Phantom. So I'm not sure if it's the 20th or the 21st Phantom. I don't know. But... Uh, I'm not going to review the idea of the Phantom. I do like the idea of the Phantom, this generational idea that the son takes over the mantle of the father. Therefore, the idea is that he is the ghost who walks and people, well, each Phantom is treated as the same guy by everyone around him. But he's not the same guy. He's the son of the... the, 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 the uh, generation, generation, generation. So, let's get on with issues one and two. Uh, in issues one and two... The Phantom is chasing a gun runner. Now, all of these issues that I've read so far have been sort of morality tales. And uh, I'm okay with that. I think it's a lot of fun. Now, the Phantom in these books doesn't have to work necessarily with the law. It seems that the law of that particular area that the Phantom generally functions in, it seems to be that the law allows for the Phantom to operate outside of it. It's like the law bends around the phantom to allow him to seek justice. It's like there's this uh, just inherent trust in this uh, supposedly mythical figure's ability to be just. They just trust his judgment. And I find that interesting, that there is... Uh, uh, it's, it's gone beyond tree or like truce or treaty or whatever. It's gone beyond people just signing something and saying, yeah, he's fine to do whatever he wants. It's, there is a belief in this character's general ability to be benevolent. Or benevolent? Benevolent. But, uh, uh, and there is also a, a little bit of fear that surrounds him. I don't necessarily think that it's just criminals who fear the Phantom. I feel like uh, uh, since he does have the uh, reputation that there is a myth surrounding him, he's the ghost who walks, I mean, people don't necessarily know that they are mortal men the son just takes over the mantle of the father. But what's interesting about this particular series is that uh, the Phantom is treated as a fearsome ghost. I mean, a lot, in some of the Phantom that I've read in the past, uh, it seems to be quite often that he's not necessarily fearsome. He's not necessarily a frightening guy. Granted, I understand he's a guy and a purple unitard. I understand why that might be silly to some people. But uh, with the idea being that he is the ghost who walks, we need this idea that he's a ghost. We need this idea that uh, he can sneak up on people. We need this idea that he is effective in uh, concealing himself and popping up anywhere he wants to be. Now, that becomes an issue. Like, there needs to be some kind of omnipresence. There needs to be... Uh, he needs to be a guy that people don't know how to expect him. It's, it's not just a man who runs into a room and says, I'll fight you, for you are the villain, and then they fight, and then I win because I'm the hero, or you're the damsel in distress, now get on my shoulder, we're going to safety. But, uh, because I'm sure that's how he talks. Get on my shoulder, we're going to safety. Bee -hee -hee. So, so the Phantom, in this book, or in this series, uh, as far as I've gotten, He's, he's a really dark type of guy. He is kind of brooding at times, but they don't really hang on the brooding thing. Uh, it, what they really hang on is this phantom's ability to organize events within the course of the story to have the eventual outcome that he wants to have. Like The, the villain thinks that he is running away effectively. He thinks that he's potentially getting away. He's like, I'm, out, out, I'm, out, I'm outsmarting the phantom, and I'm good at what I'm doing. And... Uh, the eventuality is is that uh, through running away from the Phantom, he ends up exactly where the Phantom wants him to be. And if you decide to read issues one and two of this series, I'm not going to tell you where the guy ends up, but it is in the trap of the Phantom. <laughs> it's uh, it's a lot of really interesting. Like, this is exactly how I think the Phantom needs to be treated, so Mark for Hyden, good job. But uh, let's see here. One of the things that... Uh, 
I find interesting is that a lot of phantom books have a, sort of an apology going on saying that uh, we know this guy's out in the middle of the jungle and how are we because he is the protector of the jungle and its people and yada yada so we know this guy's out in the middle of the jungle how do we get him to civilization well this is set in modern day which at the time was the 80s so, uh, or late, late 80s. This is, uh, this is out in 89. I'm getting a phone call. I am sorry, phone. But, I'm in a video. So, The Phantom, where was I? Okay, yeah, so, so The Phantom is not just an isolated guy now. He has technology that can get him around the world. We don't have to, uh, uh, we don't have to uh, worry about how is he going to get where he's going to go and why do we have to spend all of our time figuring out how the Phantom gets where he gets. I like the idea that we just assume that he knows how to do it. Why? Because planes and boats and cars exist. So let's just assume that the Phantom can get where he wants to go and we don't have to have the big adventure of him getting to America or getting to England or getting to wherever he decides to leave to or to the city uh, it doesn't have to be either set in the jungle or set in another country. He can be wherever he needs to be. Yeah. Anyway, that's a, an annoyance of mine with Phantom Stories. So, uh... One of the really interesting things about issues one and two of this series, and this is where I'll leave this, because there's not a lot to it. It's a, a two-issue story arc. Most of them are one-issue story arcs. But, uh... Most of the most of what I've read so far are one-issue story arcs, but uh, we do have a couple of two-issue story arcs so far. Anyway, uh, so what's really interesting, the Phantom, in issue one, uh, leaves his mark on the Gunrunner's face. Bam! Uh, the Phantom has these rings. One is supposed to be a symbol of uh, uh, protection, so you put that mark on like the wrist or something. But... Uh, if you end up with a big swollen skull imprint on your face because of the or a scar because of the phantom's other ring, the eventual uh, the eventuality is that people will run away from you. Now I think that's really interesting. People will refuse you aid or refuse to sell you things, so you end up just trapped in some foreign country. Uh, well, not necessarily foreign. You could be a bad guy who lives in that country, but uh, this gun runner was foreign to this country. And the people of the country are are a little afraid of the shadow, but there's a lot of respect the shadow, the phantom. And there's a lot of, re but there's a lot of respect that goes along with that fear. It's uh, the phantom knows best kind of attitude. And they see this mark on the gun runner's face and they say, I am not going to help this man. So people just band together to say, you are marked, and that is dangerous. It's treated like uh, a civic duty, but it's also treated like uh, shying away from a curse. Because, uh, now that's another thing that's interesting about this series that comes back in, in later issues, is uh, sort of the, the wrath of the Phantom. It was touched upon in Peter David's by looking at uh, past Phantoms, but... Uh, in this one, we really get to see situations in which the Wrath of the Phantom is something that gets evoked in the eventual fate of those people. So I, f I just felt like it was something that needed to be mentioned considering there are movies like High Noon where uh, everyone but one guy shirks their civic duty. Is that the word I want to use? Whatever. They, uh, they decide that they are not going to do their duty. And... Uh, I just think that's so interesting that this issue uh, shows people banding together and gives them a reason to do it that's not necessarily, it's the right thing to do. There's a little bit of fear in there, and there's a little bit of respect in there, and it's, a, it's an interesting uh, amalgamation of the two. So, thanks for watching the Comic Vault guys. Of course, the Comic Vault guys. Thank you guys for watching the Comic Vault. I, of course, am Vince of Geek Evolution. This is the Comic Vault. If you would like to donate to the Comic Vault, you can send things to Geekvolution, P.O. Box 14183, Linux of Kansas 66285. So, thanks for watching the Comic Vault, guys. The Comic Vault, guys. Thanks for watching the Comic Vault, guys. I'll catch you later. Ah. Uh, that was weird.